You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Thursday was the first Brian Kelly show. You, uh, if you, if you listened, awesome. I told you that Brian Kelly's now going to have his coaches show on Thursday night instead of Wednesdays. Um, there's a bunch of changes, as we've noticed. I think one of the other things that are changed. I, like, I don't think the team's staying at Lod Cook anymore. I was told they're going to be staying at the Renaissance. Um, I think something like Brian Kelly wanted more meeting space, stuff like that. It was just some more rooms as well. Lod Cook couldn't, um, uh, couldn't. Uh, uh, accommodate so I there's just it's just different right it's a lot of change I don't know that LSU's released that or anything that's just what I've been told is that they're they're moving they're going to be at the Renaissance so um you know it's just it's just a lot's different and the coaches show on Thursday is going to be part of that and part of the coaches show is no callers no live mic at TJ Ribs which I appreciate I, I don't need a guy with a fake name reading me a poem uh I would rather hear the football coach talk about football but um I one of the things Brian Kelly did talk about last night that seems to have gotten the most attention is what he said about his freshman tight end Mason Taylor. And oftentimes, and this isn't the first time Brian Kelly has lauded Mason Taylor. Oftentimes, when a coach gives an unprompted, when he mentions a player unprompted, that tells you that player is in the forefront of that coach's mind. So. If you, if you ask about a certain position group and a coach mentions a player when you ask about the position group, you better believe that player has caught his eye for whatever reason. And he has been um, very complimentary of Mason Taylor so far throughout fall camp. We got to see Mason Taylor in some of the open practices really perform well in seven-on-sevens and in team drills. And apparently he has kept it up throughout camp. And Brian Kelly was, was with maybe his most um, bullish prediction yet for freshman Mason Taylor. The number one surprise of camp is we hit a home run with Mason Taylor. He has been outstanding. I've been blessed. I've had some great tight ends. Uh, I've got seven of them right now that are active in the NFL. And uh, Mason Taylor is as good of any freshman tight end that I've had. He is outstanding. He put on about 20 pounds. He's 242 pounds. He ran 19.6 yesterday and on GPS. You know, it's one of those things. I'd like to say that we were, you know, we out-recruited everybody in the country on him. We liked him, but he's been better than anything that we could have hoped for. He's going to come in and he's going to play a lot of football for us in the SEC, and he is going to hit like the kid from Georgia hit where he blew up the SEC as a true freshman. Mason Taylor, I couldn't be more excited about him. Uh, the kid from Georgia who blew up the SEC as a freshman, that would be Brock Bowers. Uh, just as a refresher, Brock Bowers last year led the national champion Georgia Bulldogs in receiving. He had 56 catches for 882 yards and 13 touchdowns. Brian Kelly just put an absurd amount of pressure on Mason Taylor. But I'm going to scale it back a smidge. Because Mason Taylor doesn't need to be Brock Bowers. The problem Georgia had a year ago, it wasn't a problem. I mean, they won the national championship. But they had an incredible defense. What was it? Five first-round picks off that defense? It was incredible. They had one of the best college defenses we've seen in a long time. They had a veteran quarterback that managed that offense. They had a really good line. They had a couple of NFL running backs. And they had this freak show tight end freshman but their receiver core wasn't great. I mean, George Pickens, when he was healthy, was awesome. And that's no surprise to me Pickens is blowing up right now in camp with the Steelers because he's a freak show. George Pickens, when he's healthy, changes the, changes the game if he's healthy. So last year, Brock Bowers blew up for Georgia, but did so out of necessity. They needed receiving options. And here came this freak show kid who was just ready to, to catch 60 balls for 900 yards and 13 touchdowns and was physically able to do it. LSU doesn't need Mason Taylor to be that guy. 
I was thinking about this earlier today because Brian Kelly also talked about the receivers. Um, play that one if you would, Muse, where you know where he taught where he listed all the um, all of the the depth that they have at receiver. Please, I think it's number ten. No, which, if you have it, then play it. Yeah. You've got a lot of options there. Cortez Hankton left Georgia and national championship to come to LSU, and I, I think he feels like he's got more weapons here and pretty excited about the opportunity. And so, you know, that being said, part of this evaluation is the quarterback's got to be able to get the ball distributed to these playmakers in an efficient and effective way. And and so that's part of the evaluation too, because we do have these kind of playmakers. So it, later he also mentions he runs through it with Kayshawn Butte and Malik Neighbors. He mentions Jure Jenkins again, talks about Brian Thomas, and then mentions Chris Hilton and how fast he is. He can blow the top off a of defense, mentions Kyron Lacey, and goes oh yeah, and we know Jack Besh is always going to be a guy who who is a difference maker and we get him the ball. Like Jack Besh was your best receiver a year ago after Kayshawn Butte got hurt, and he was the last of like seven guys the head coach mentioned. was like, oh, by the way, I forgot about the guy that led us in receiving when our All-American got hurt. And that's not a knock on what Brian Kelly said. It's just a reminder of how much depth and talent they have. Like, they're going to have trouble getting the ball, getting all of these guys' touches. Like, that's a really good problem to have, but that's going to be the challenge. So you're not going to need Mason Taylor to go catch 60 balls for 900 yards and 13 touchdowns. I actually charted the freshman seasons for every one of the tight ends Brian Kelly mentioned that he has in the NFL. He's got seven in the NFL. One of them is an asterisk because it was Kyle Rudolph, and Kyle Rudolph was a freshman before Brian Kelly got there. Rudolph had Kelly had Rudolph for one year, so that's a little bit of an asterisk. Then he had Tyler Eifert, and he's had a lot of good ones. Troy Nicholas, Cole Komet, Alizé Mack, Tommy Trimble. Right now, Michael Mayer's up there, who's probably he and Bowers are the two best tight ends in the country. Mayer had the best freshman season of any tight end for Brian Kelly. 42 catches, 450 yards, and two touchdowns. I want to put some perspective on that. The best receiving season for a tight end in LSU history was Thad Moss in 2019. 47 catches, 570 yards, and four touchdowns. Okay, 47 for 570. Robert Royal in 2000 as a sophomore had 22 catches for 340. And in 1996, when David LaFleur became a first-round draft pick, as a senior, David LaFleur had 30 catches for 439 yards. Became a first-round draft pick. 30 catches for 439. That was the benchmark until Thad Moss. My point is, LSU has never had a tight end have this massive production, like what we've seen, like what Brock Bowers did. Even like The season Michael Mayer had as a freshman at Notre Dame is comparable with what Thad Moss did as the greatest receiving season for a tight end in LSU history. So... You can look at the season Mayer had and said, man, if Mason Taylor can go for 42, 5, 50, and a couple of scores, that's a really good season for a freshman. That's the best freshman season the Titans ever had under Brian Kelly. I think what's more likely, and you can write this down because I think this is going to be your target. Tyler Eifert, as a freshman, of course, Tyler Eifert's gone on to have a really good NFL career. Tyler Eifert had 27 receptions. 352 yards and two scores. I think that's a good number for Mason Taylor. Basically, 30 catches for 300 yards. I think that is a really, really good target for Mason Taylor as a freshman in this offense. Look, Tommy Trimble had 16 catches as a freshman. Alizé Mack had 13. Cole Komet had two. Like, Brian Kelly's had some really... Guys who are in the NFL right now, NFL tight ends, who didn't really produce as freshmen. Now you got a guy who he's saying is as good as any of them, but he's on a team where you are stacked at receiver. So, look, we know Brian Kelly wants a tight end on the field at all time. I think we're going to see packages where you're going to see Cole Taylor, Nick Storrs, Jack Mashburn, probably short yardage situations where you need a bigger body in there. The fact that Mason Taylor is put on 20 pounds, as Brian Kelly said, got him up around 250, 260. That's phenomenal. But... I also think what you're more likely to see is a, is an accent piece 
in the passing game in this offense instead of a feature like Michael Mayer was as a freshman, like Brock Bowers had to be at Georgia. So I'm I'm excited that Brian Kelly is making that kind of comp because he believes in him, which is awesome. I'm also trying to temper expectations because that's a super high bar and it's also not something LSU needs in this offense. But you better believe, keep that kid healthy, let him grow over the next three years. Seems like they've got a really, really good one from a coach who we've talked about it since the day he was hired. The two positions, Brian Kelly has recruited and developed the best at Notre Dame, offensive line, tight end. Those are the two he has put on Moss into the league. He knows what he's talking about. He's high on Mason Taylor, and we all should be as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.